Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to another episode on the Bros of DK. Today, joined again with Jeroen, who is cleaning out the car. We made a total mess of it, but uh, cleaning it out a little bit. Just slept over here in the Novo Hotel, and uh, now we've got to drive two hours because we're going to visit a very, very special farm home in the countryside of France. It's also part of exploring, cleaning out the car. Oh. The car always gets so messy when you're on a road trip. You have to clean it out multiple times during the road trip. Put all your stuff back into the car. This is also part of the job, of the exploring job. So it's also a part of what I want to show you when you are watching these episodes. You, you drank too much Red Bull. <laughs> oh, it's not a, yeah, for me as well. <laughs> I'm, I'm guilty of this as well. Okay, I think it's clean and uh, it's ready to hit the road again. Okay, nice night of sleep yeah, last night. Unfortunately, with the corona pandemic, I always love to swim at hotels, but when the corona pandemic started, all the hotels in Europe closed their swimming pools and now I'm really sad because normally when I go exploring every single night, I jump into the, the swimming pool, that's not possible anymore. Bye bye hotel, bye bye swimming pool that's not open and uh, hello road, let's go. this time usefully editing uh, or reviewing this video and uh, getting it ready for you all. The weather is totally terrible so let's lock the car. We arrived, just arrived, sorry for the wind noise. Oh my god, this is just... <laughs> France, sometimes it's beautiful weather, 30 degrees, sun shining, and the other day it just rains all day long. Oh my god. Big puddle of water here. I'm gonna jump over. Okay, let's walk on this side. This place is totally amazing. We just saw it from the road, and we are really excited to go in there. Little French towns, they are always very peculiar. Lots of houses. And this here to the left is the building that we're coming for. Look at this place. Totally overgrown over the years that it has been abandoned. Maybe this one. That seems like an entrance, right? Okay. And maybe that door. This one is close. Okay, let's try something else. Look at this. Mr. Droz was a magician. Mrs. Droz was a model, and together throughout their lives they had a very interesting career. But at a certain point, they decided to quiet down a little bit and settle for a cozy French farm home. They were so madly in love 
that at a certain point, the Droz family consisted of Mr. Droz, Mrs. Droz, and nine children. All throughout the house, memories of them are scattered. The walls are covered with photos of the children and the happy times they had together. But around 2010, the Droz family suddenly disappeared. Nobody knows what happened to them. Today we will venture throughout their house and explore their forgotten lives because you are watching a documentary by the Bros of Decay. To say the least, we got inside and I'm really happy for that because this is a very, very unique place of the Droz family. I'm gonna let you come into the kitchen because that's the first part of the house that we are gonna film today. It's a very small kitchen for such a huge family. <sighs> let's start off here and let's see what these people left behind. First off, we have the spice rack up here. And you can see a lot of toppings. And those are presumably for pancakes that the mother used to make for the children. A bit of rice to the side. And beneath there, all the spices that you would use for cooking. And immediately, we can see the spider webs taking over this place after 10 years of abandonment. That's such a long time, a full decade of nobody being in this place. Maybe we are even the first ones entering it after that time period. This is the window that we just came in through. The ivy is growing inside, taking it over. And it's not able to close anymore. That's why we could get in there. Over here, some copper pots are hanging where the woman would make beautiful dishes for the family with. From corks for very big wine bottles. And then to the side here, we have the very, very small sink and kitchen area where they, where they used to cook, wash vegetables, cut things. The last dishes are left here on the drying rack. Oh wow, this is a photo album. No way. Oh my God. I immediately recognize places throughout the house in this photo album. I'm gonna take it with me on this adventure and show you some places that are in this photo album. Okay, I will place it back after I finish the video. Up here, we've got the glasses for the eight to nine children that probably lived in this place. The cups, the bowls for the cereal in the morning, and the knives to cut the, cut the vegetables. Wow. Look on this side. Here's the stove, the tea kettles to make tea in the morning. And that leads us into one of the craziest rooms that I've ever seen while exploring abandoned places. This is so cluttered. I shouldn't say cluttered, just... Yeah, they made it so cozy, with so many memories of all the people that once lived here. And let's start on this side of the room with this wall of photos. And let's see who lived in this place.
I think over here we can see one of the girls, one of the daughters that once used to live in this place. Beneath it, there are some vintage pictures of children. Maybe these were the mother and the father, or the grandmother and the grandfather in the early days. And below it, got one of the boys that once used to live in here. Oh my God, look at the mother. When she gave, just gave birth to one of the children. Just crazy. Them on a vacation. And I must point out, the mother is a very beautiful woman. Wow. You can see her over here. She seems, she, look at her smile and the way she poses, she even looks like a model to my opinion. Look at her poses, wow. That might be her profession. Down there, the children with the grandfather. And I love, love this rocking chair that they put in the corner of this room. We rock it around. The upholstery on there is just amazing. What's even more crazy about this place is that the window over here is just broken. You can see the rain outside dripping away. It stopped raining harshly now. It's just raining a little bit here in France at the moment. All throughout the house, on the walls, you're going to see pictures of the family. Another boy. Some boys, some girls. Wow. Isn't that just fantastic? Them on the beach, on a vacation. And even more pictures down here that they put on display. A drawing of a big castle. Oh, I see something down there. Those are wooden clubs. Wooden clubs, I'm not sure the exact name. But it's something Dutch and French. And that, that's what, that's this kind of shoe, hand-carved wooden shoes that they used in the earlier days to walk the fields. That's what farmers used to use. Look at these pictures over here that are completely covered with spider webs. Wow. More pictures on the wall. And I think my assumption of the mother being a model might be true. Look at all those pictures of her posing in different positions. Just love to see it. Little hanger from the children that they might have made in class. And I love the vintage radio that we see here in front of us. Just an amazing piece. It's like a little lever. Oh my god! It holds a record player on top of it. I've not seen that before. You can play records on top of the vintage radio. Wow! Isn't that just amazing to see? Down here, they stored the nice plates, as you can see. Wow. Just have a look at the room that we are standing in right now. And the ambience, it just gives ambience that it's totally open. There's like a walkway all the way around this living room. And over here to the side, we've got a little couch. And this couch was used by the boys and girls when they were younger and lived in this place. Some copper antiques left up here. Teapots, tea kettles. Wow. Love it. I also had some cats in this place. Have a look at all the books that are stored up here. From children's books to dramas to thrillers. Everything that the family used to read 
is still here. I don't know any of these titles because they're all French and I don't read French books yet. My French is not good enough for that. I hope to be at that level fairly soon in the future. Somebody in this house was very artistic. We have seen lots of paintings that are handmade. All paintings are handmade, but I mean by the family. <laughs> A scale with the weights still in front of it. Even the very tiny ones. Wow. And this is a picture of the outside of the house before it got abandoned. And what also piques my interest is they had, that they had such a small television with such a broad, yeah, so many children used to live in here. But they decided to not get a big television and spend those times in front of the television. But they decided to spend it with the children. And that's what I truly love. Besides the television, we have lots of handmade French wines. And that's what you see fairly regularly in France. People from the town make wine. They just give it around, give it to the people of the town. And this, what we see behind here, used to be a sink area, but it has been converted into a little display area later on. And I put some plates here, some copper plates, some other things. Lots of magazines. Big stack of magazines. Wow. Oh, look at the baby pictures down here. They are fairly interesting as well. What a beautiful boy back there. Oh, amazing to see all of this. The spirits, the light, the fireplace. This the children made themselves. Just wonderful. And then in the middle of the room, we have the enormous fireplace that used to light up this room and bring life to it. But let me sit down on the couch for a second first, because remember, I took that photo album and in there, let me place the camera a bit better so you can see. In there, we have a picture. Yes, it's this one. It's the man and the woman. They are at a bit older age there. You can see the woman is still very, very beautiful. But when I, yep, yeah, you can see that's the fireplace that they are in front of. It's this one. And those are true memories to my opinion. Wow. Look at all the pictures that are displayed on top of the fireplace. Them together. Maybe on a little vacation. Wow. Above the fireplace. Got some other things. The man and a woman when they just got married. And this over here is a drawing of the house before it got abandoned, of course. The last ashes are still in the fireplace. Wow. Okay, you have to give me credit right now. My assumption has to, has to be right right now. Look at all these pictures of the mother from when she was younger, all still displayed in this place. And even the full-on drawing of her in a posing position that must have meant that she was a model. Definitely. Wow. See this book. The Rose, Le Barman, de chez Maxims. Oh, they marked the rose everywhere in this little booklet. See the rose? And they're talking about a play. So she might have acted as well. So modeling and acting might have been her profession. Uh, you see, I'm always, I always say might, or I assume, because I never know it for sure. These people, don't, we don't know where they are, and they can't tell their story, so that's why I make assumptions. But my assumptions 
I try to mostly get right and talk to neighbors and see what people have to say around town. A bellow down there. And I want to tell a little bit more about the stories that I uh, create about the places. I try to always get them right. And I always talk to people around town and I research in the home. I read papers and that's how I make the stories. Of course, they can, they sometimes are not 100% accurate because these people, they just don't live anymore in most of the cases or something happened to them and we will never know. But uh, those are, yeah. You, you never can do good for everybody, but I try to do my very best on that. So that's what I want to say about my stories. So let's go further. Let's look at this wall, because somebody in this place was a true artist. And as you can see, there is not a painting handmade on the wall over here. A barometer above it. Look at this. Wow. Here, a saw blade hangs from the ceiling. Isn't that just fantastic? The cats that once used to roam this place are also still hanging here on the wall. Wow. A candle that has fully burned over the years. Let's look at this area first. Here they have the coffee table in the middle with a hallway a hallway sewing machine on there. That's a brand that I've not seen before. And a cookie jar. A tin cookie jar with French kings on the sides and the front. Another candle. They used to love candlelight a lot, as you can see. Wow. And then this was the couch that they would sit on. But it's actually very small for such a large household. <laughs> Look at this very, very cute sheep on here. Teddy bear sheep. I just love it. Might have been of one of the children. A lamp behind it. Amazing to see. Okay, we're almost through the very big living room. But now in front of us, we have an enormous mirror where the people in the morning came check their hair before they went out of the house. But also just a beautiful piece that gives character to the home. And that's now completely covered by spider webs. Wow. What a beautiful piece. And next to it, got the woman with one of the children and some pictures of the house. I love the hat that she left here behind. And then over here on this drawer, we got a radio. Beautiful radio. Oh, I can see the interest drawer over here. They stored lots and lots of memories. Oh my God. Look at this. this these are the children that presumably had a play at school. So many memories left in here. Also a lot of vintage pictures in this drawer, as you can see. They never threw away even one picture that they took. Wow, isn't that just fascinating to see? Nowadays we snap thousands of pictures, but back then it was quite difficult to make these pictures. Let's put them back nicely. Some pictures of the children as well. Vacations around the world. This was probably in Arabia. You can see maybe a mosque or something like that behind it. Oh, wow, and they even stored the film that they used to make these pictures. Look at that. <laughs> Crazy drawer is this. Thousands of memories. Of the people that once used to live in this place are still left in this drawer. And it's also incredibly heavy. Wow. Look at this. And then down here, that like a teapot. And we have another display cabinet. 
completely filled with glasses. For when people came over, wow, the sound that it makes is incredible. Totally filled with wine glasses. What do we got up there? Some jaws. Perfume. The toilette femme. It's perfume for the female. And here are the plates stored. Another mirror to the side here. And then here, we got a hall tree. With a woman store her bald hats that she used to roam the streets of the town. An umbrella when it was raining like today. And even an acoustic guitar left in the hall tree. Let's now ponder into this part of the house and we walk straight into the bathroom with one shower for all the people that used to live in this place. Wow, even the shampoos are still open from the last time they used it. Shower curtain, look at this, the clothes of the woman are still left here. I'm so much wondering in this place what happened to these people and it's probably very tragic and I maybe don't want to know but it keeps you awake at night to really think about what happened to places like this. <sighs> so sad. Maybe it's they, one day if they moved they would probably take their toothbrushes with them. That's something you don't leave behind. All the toothbrushes, the screen, the shavers, everything is still in here. Wow. And even behind me here, I got a vanity where the woman's, the multiple women's, could make themselves beautiful in the morning. All the makeups and perfumes, and even a little watch is left behind. Look over here. Got like this little drawing of woman legs, they have shoes on, and the shoe is displayed above it. Amazing. <laughs> and here the child made a little drawing that says occupy, and that means occupied, and this one it's not occupied. And we're looking at the toilet, of course. Look at this. Crazy stuff. And from the toilet, the first thing we see, the first bedroom actually, is the children's bedroom. And a lot of children used to sleep in this place. Look at all the drawings that are made in here. All the artworks that they made over the years when they left in this place. And we saw this one before in the drawer. That's the play that the children made. And these might have been the two daughters that slept and even lived in this place. The toys are all still here. See, even a smaller baby used to sleep in this room. Oh. Pictures of them. What a place. Literally. What a place. So one, two, three, four, five we have in here. We're gonna keep counting. A bunk bed with all the toys of the children still on there. And then a little area where they could study and read, but at their own little desk with all the books and even the children, their stuff. It's completely covered with spider webs. The bed linen that they would use to make the beds of the children. Wow. Oh. It's 
isn't this just crazy? What do we have over here? I'm fascinated by this book. Le Oncle Tom. Oh, it's a pretty heavy book for a child. <laughs> okay. And now it's time to ponder into the other side of the house. But first off, let's look at these things that are left up here. Nutcrackers and old tools. And this was a little brush that they used. Wow. Fascinating. Display cabinet for all their most beautiful crystalline glasses. And even more weights up here. La France, a map of France. And that, my dear viewers, takes us into the dining area part of this house. With a staircase to the left of us, a very small dining table. I wonder how it must have been to live with 10 people in this place. You wouldn't have space for yourself anymore. Pictures of the children hanging here on the wall. This is a hammock. Ooh. Oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm already destroying it. I'm gonna nicely hang it back up there. Wow, everything is very, very fragile in this home. Wow. And next to that hammock, we have like a little verse of a child. Langora, Langora e Incha. So Langora means is the name of the uh, of the cat. Uh, so Langora is a cat, the cat of the day, the cat of the night. On long stretch, I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying here. Blank, noir, et chocolat. That's all, those are the colors of the. So it's white, black, or chocolate. Et une rose matin, ou entre des des grands. So I think it says that she uh, stays at the window in the morning. And here we have the name of the child and it's written in 2006. To the side here we have another sewing machine. A hitter. Not seen that one before. The keys to the castle. Fascinating. And here we have that same man coming again. I don't know what he has to do with the family. But I'm still figuring it out. The same style of painting, also in this corner. Some shoes down there. And then the dining table. And I'm gonna again take my photo album and search for a photo. Have a look at this. This is the coffee table where these people used to sit together and have a meal. And they look like grandparents of the household. And up there, we can see them from the other side. Here the woman would be standing that we see in this picture. This photo album is just magical for me. Big mirror to the side over here. Oh, I see something. I notice, I recognize these all the time. And these are cigarette packs from back in the day. Vogue. And they were, they were branded as female cigarettes. It says on here, um, uh, smoking causes cancer in French. Crazy stuff. And that takes us into the bedroom of the parents. Yes, you're seeing this right and you're hearing this right. This bedroom was in the dining room, was just connected to the dining room. So literally no privacy for the parents. Just look at how beautiful 
the spat is and the blue accents all around it. You can see blue comes back all throughout this bedroom, the stove, the things on the stove, even the painting on the wall here and the plushies and the basket there. Wow, I just love that it's still made. Let's go a little bit through here and show you the bedroom. Oh, here are some old school pictures of this bedroom. Wow, fascinating. Blue, blue throughout the bedroom. I shouldn't sing because I can't sing. <laughs> the parents. That's something very traditionally that they do in France. They put parents or grandparents above the beds to give respect to the people that brought them life. A wedding picture. Not, maybe not a wedding picture, just a picture of a couple above here. Wow. That's what I so much love about houses. They have teams. And this, this, these people, they just love blue. And they made a blue team in here. They made stories in this place. That's just what I adore. They wouldn't allow another color. Even the books are all blue in this room. And just have a look at this wonderful stove that we are seeing here. Monterne, a wood stove. Little doors. Okay, let's try to close it again. Oh my God, that's harsh. And above the stove, the team keeps on being blue. Look at this. <laughs> Even the candles and the ashtray is blue. So many artifacts. These are cream boxes, like face cream boxes. Nivea says on there. Some pictures, some postcards. Bretagne, that's French, that's in France. I love this lighter. Wow. Fascinating stuff. And here we can see the toolbox the man of the house that the woman claimed i'm not going to open this any further but you can see buttons in there so you, she used it for sewing crazy a globe even on a windowsill here of course the world is blue there's lots of water that's very that you can put in this room because it's blue I'm gonna shut it up for a moment about the blue. Excuse me for the language. The bed linen is still in here. And then a big rack, completely filled with CDs. That's something that we don't see often anymore. Wow, amazing place. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna close this one. <laughs> I'm not gonna talk about it. And even more pictures of the family. Wow. What a place, what a place. Tea kettles all on top of here. And even a coffee machine at the end. A very, very fancy one. Record, it says on the side. Wow. Okay, it's now time to take a stroll up the stairway. But first off, I noticed something. And here we have like a banner of the play that the woman was in. And this is De Rose. And that's a illustration. Illus illusionist. Oh! Illusionist. Okay, so they are like 
a magician, as you can say. And okay, so she had something to do with this man because he is the illusionist, the magician. And then we have the rose illusionist. Okay, pieces are falling together here. So maybe she was a model or an actress or somebody who acted in the magician play, the rose. And maybe even this was her husband. I say maybe because I'm not 100% sure, but it seems like it. So let's go upstairs right now. I hope this upstairs floor is as fascinating as downstairs. A little <laughs> prevention for the children so they don't fall downstairs. No fence for them. Wow, okay. Interesting. It's very, very different than the downstairs floors. Let me turn up the light. Okay. A painting, handmade painting. We can see immediately here above this drawer. Storage places. And they had lots and lots of candles that are half burned in this place. Hmm. This is bad number seven to my belief. This has a bow and arrow of one of the children on it. Wow. This was a little sitting area or a little play area for the children, as you can see. The desk with the books that I used to study on. Even the microscope still left. And here we have the same man coming back, performing a trick. This might have been him. Wow. And I told you downstairs there's only a little, little television, but the children, they had some, they had a bigger one. They had a bigger television than in the living room. <laughs> Crazy. This was their area to sit at. I love how it's constructed. And that takes us further throughout this upstairs area. Okay, this is number eight, nine. We see over there. Singer, sewing machine. No, it's not a singer, excuse me. They had very special brands in this place. Hitchcavas. I don't know this one as well. Vibrante, it says on there. Those are sewing machine brands that I've never ever heard of. Ivy is growing inside of this place. Look at that. Wow. Now we have this fascinating suitcase here. That's full, literally full of letters that they wrote out to family and friends. And this one, it says, is from 1994. Cher, known, it says on there. Wow. Those are true memories. Let's close that up. So number nine, we are passing by. And from up here, you can also get a glance downstairs into the living space that we were just inside. And that takes us towards the last room of this place. And that seems to have been, look at this, look at this, the children do, yeah, they had like their gaming computers from back in the day with joysticks. I can remember that I had a computer like that, but that was years ago. I think that was about 12 years ago. Oh my God, look at this machine. Big hard drives next to it. Wow, just fascinating. A race wheel and another computer for another child. What an amazing place. And there are all the boxes for the computers are stored. 
and even another one there and the tent bed in this place wow and the children even at their own balcony and it just started to rain again over here in france oh my god what a place There you go, man. Okay. Let's open up the window. Let's climb outside. Okay. Now, it's always very important when you explore abandoned places to leave them like you found them and to also try to close them again. It's gonna be hard. I think it's gonna be pretty hard. If it's not possible, then it's not possible. I think this is the best I can do. Yeah. Okay, we're now outside in front of this amazing place. Wow, just have a look at it. Such an amazing French house. Completely left behind and forgotten. I hope they do something with it. And I've heard it's for sale right now. You've heard it as well? Mm. Yeah, I hope somebody buys it and makes something nice of it. So I want to thank those, the Troos family that once lived here and all the children and the mother and the father for their lives. I hope nothing terrible happened to them, but maybe it has. So thank you all for watching this week's video. If you liked it, please like, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of this content. And there's also a link in the description for Patreon. They can support us and help us out with going on these adventures. And thank you all. I'll see you next week in another episode. Bye bye. I love you very much.